Hey, I'm Gladius, and this is my free-to-play Aventurine build guide and analysis. Aventurine is looking to be the next meta sustain with his insane shield output and follow-up synergies. He has the ability to apply debuffs as well, really good for Akron teams. We'll talk about his kit, his Lycone options, Relic options, and finally, Eidolons and team build. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Aventurine's whole kit revolves around generating and replenishing this very strong shield that comes from his skill. It can stack up to twice the original amount. And at the start of battle, through his ascension trace, he actually gets one whole shield for free when the battle starts. His shield is team-wide and pretty strong, and his talent enhances this even further by granting anyone with a shield an effect resistance of 50. Uh, this is important when preventing crowd controls and debuffs. Aventurine goes even further, he has a get out of crowd control free card every two turns. And another mechanic of the shield is that whenever someone gets hit, Aventurine gets one point of blind bed, and if he gets hit, he gets two points of blind bed. When blind bed reaches seven, he unleashes his follow up attack, and up to 10 points of blind bed can be stored as a mechanic of overcap protection. The aforementioned benefits of this shield is crucial to how Aventurine functions, so it's important for the shield to not break on as many teammates as possible. But luckily through his ascension trace called Blingo, he actually gets more points of blind bet whenever teammates do follow-up attacks and up to 3 per turn. And when he does his own follow-up attack, he actually replenishes everyone's shield by 30% of the original mount, and whoever has the lowest shield value actually replenishes 60% of the original value. This is crucial to how he sustains the team, as you don't really want to use a skill every turn that is too skill point negative for a sustained support. And then we have his ultimate, which I view as the icing on the cake for everything that he does already, but not the biggest part of his kit. It deals single target damage and applies a single target crit damage taken debuff to one enemy at the same time giving 1-7 to seven points of blind bet for more follow-up attack triggers. His basic attack scales off defense, which is okay damage for a sustain unit, and it doesn't do anything too special, but you'll end up using it quite a bit, because being skill point positive is very nice for your team. Along with the rest of his kit, his shields, his other damaging abilities, he scales off defense percent, and he does decent damage from his ascension trace giving him free 48% crit rate from having defense up to 4000, which you want to build anyways because you want a strong shield. Through my assessment of Aventurine's whole kit, I've determined his primary role as a sustainer and a shielder for your team. It's a very comfortable environment that he provides, even giving free effect resistance. His secondary functions are to trigger follow-up attacks, which may very well have team synergies, at the same time doing supplementary damage. Now, compared to other preservation units, by far he has the highest sustain output. He is really good at sustaining equal damage across the board for your team, but what he lacks is a fail-safe mechanic to prevent death it's from bad targeting RNG, especially single target. He doesn't have a taunt, he doesn't have damage reduction, he doesn't have a revive or emergency heal. So if you're like me and really value comfortable gameplay and really hates it when bat RNG results in restarting the battle, I highly recommend building the strongest shield possible and building him defensively, which I'll go over in the next few sections. Aventurine's kit is all over the place, but one thing that ties everything together is having a lot of defense. Everything scales off defense, and even gets 48% free crit rate if you have at least 4,000. I wouldn't necessarily stop at 4,000. I would go for the highest shield possible because it really ties everything together. When your shields break, you lose so much benefit from the talent and other traces. It's not a good time no matter what you're trying to do on Aventurine. Let's build main stats on Aventurine. For chest bees, you definitely want defense percent. Might be tempting to go crit damage here with all that free crit, but do know your shields will never crit. Only defense can help you here. For boots, we want defense percent or speed, but for different reasons. Defense is better for sustaining and doing damage, but speed, giving you more actions, has value in certain team comps. For sphere, again, defense percent is superior because while imaginary damage do help your damage, but it doesn't improve your shield value. For Rope, Defense Percent is the best general pick. You only have a 110 cost ult, 
and it doesn't even affect his shield that much. But at E1, this changes, at which point ERR becomes more valuable. For substats, I like defense percent over speed over effect resistance, and some crit damage is nice too for his damage. Yeah, his passive gives a lot of free effect resistance as well. He even immunes a crowd control every two turns, but I have a feeling uh, enemies are going to be more spammy when it comes to crowd controls, and he gets uh, punished a lot when he gets crowd controlled. Unlike Locha's Field or Fushuan, it actually works even while they're crowd controlled. For Aventurine, everything falls apart because he can't do his follow-up attack anymore, and it will be a bad time. Now let's talk about Relic set bonuses. Relic main stats and substats take kind of a priority here, even if it means you piecing together only a two-piece, two-piece bonus or no bonus at all. But if we're talking about optimizing Aventurine, in my opinion, his best set is Knight of Purity Palace. It's a separate shield multiplier that is huge. The bonus alone can be as impactful as using a 5-star light cone versus a 4-star in terms of sustaining with your shield. But if you really wanted him to do the most damage possible, best in slot is actually Pioneer Diver of Deep Waters. For planner ornaments, there is unfortunately no set tailor-made for his kit. For the time being, given how hard it is to even find the main stats and substats that you like, using any of these sets will work for you. But if I were to pick one that stands a bit above the rest, it'd be Broken Keel. Just because how universal it is and it's just OP. Now let's talk about Lycones. Just coming out of building Akron, I can really appreciate how many options he's got and how good they are. Maybe with the exception that you want to have the perfect sustain and doing the most damage possible, then his signature Lycone is actually so much better than the rest. Because it's the only Lycone that does everything, with a super high base defense, high defense percent, a personal crit damage buff, and a 100% base chance to apply a vulnerability debuffs, which can be very valuable for your team. Don't be trapped into building EHR for this 100 base chance because you actually get 7 hits from your follow-up attacks. The chances of you missing on this is very low. But now, if you're strictly considering his sustain and defensive utilities, which I think most people should, you have so many great alternatives. To a point where his signature isn't even a big improvement. Moment of Victory, which is Japart's standard banner 5-star light cone, is on par with his signature having slightly less base defense, but it provides so much free taunt value that almost triples his chance of being targeted by single target attacks and crowd controls, both of which he's amazing at dealing with. He has 3 times your typical character's effective HP pool with all that defense and an immunity to crowd control every 2 turns. He is amazing at taking extra heat off your team, something he was kind of weak to begin with. Landau's choice is good for the same reason with extra taunt, but you do land up with a lot lower defense. Day 1 of my new life is amazing at team sustain and can even rival the 5 stars at high supreme positions. It makes what he's already good at even better. The Battle Pass Lycone and the Herd Shop Lycone are great for their higher base defense, so they're good stat sticks. Fushuan's Lycone and We Are Wildfires are surprisingly good in simulated universe where you unexpectedly lose HP for no reason. Now let's look at a list of Lycones that actually have offensive utilities or improve his personal damage for those that want to build him more offensively. This is where his signature is well above the competition, but if you're strictly using Aventurine with Akron, Trin of the Universal Market will be almost as good as his signature Lycone. The MOC Currency Lycone is similar in strength as the Battle Pass Lycone, and the limited 4-star Lycone Concert for 2 is actually slightly better even, but also less obtainable being a limited banner gacha coming alongside Aventurine's own signature Lycone. Now I know I'm biased and uh, there's a lot of freedom when building Aventurine, there's no strict rule, but for a free-to-play Aventurine at E0, in my opinion, is better built defensively with a defensive Lycone rather than one that focuses on his damage. Let's talk about Eidolons. I'll start by saying that Aventurine is very complete at E0, considering he is mostly functioning as a high output shield sustainer, which doesn't really change much with Eidolons. But if you're strictly looking to do the most damage possible, that's where the Eidolons come in. Now starting at E2 and all the way to E6, he actually accumulatively end up tripling his damage. 
with most of that gain locked behind the final idol on E6, and at which point I think it's worthwhile to build him to do more damage, be it, you know, swapping out the chest piece to crit damage and allocating more substats to crit value. Now, E1 is very interesting. It replenishes his shield by 100% of the base value every time he uses his ultimate. And I think this is very powerful, at which point you should use an ERR rope instead of defense percent. In a sense where either he becomes fully skill point positive, like Locha, by never having to cast a skill again, or significantly improves his sustained output if the situation calls for it. Either way, it makes him super comfortable to play with. And not only that, he further buffs everyone with his shield, including himself, 20% crit damage. Now, if you're debating between pulling for the E1 or this S1 of Signature Lycone, I'd have to say the Signature is a little better when it comes to offensive utilities, but E1 is more comfortable. It gives you better sustain by having another way to replenish your shield. And finally, let's talk about team building. It's, it's very easy for Aventurine. He is an SP positive sustain with high output. It's very akin to someone like Locha, so he fits into almost every team that wants a safe and comfortable environment. That being said, he is better than average when it comes to sustaining Akron teams. With the ability to utilize his signature light cone or trend of the universal market, either way, he offers a good amount of debuffs for Akron. His true potential though, and the most tryhard and optimal team will be a team where you strategize around follow-up attacks. This is where he can offer unmatched value and be irreplaceable in a sustained team slot. His frequency of FUA triggers makes him essential in teams where every single FUA is part of a positive feedback loop. Unless you want to forego any sustain on the team, which is not recommended for most players, Aventurine has no competition when it comes to an FUA sustain. All right, all in all, in summary, I think Aventurine is an amazing pickup for most accounts. He is crazy good at sustaining your team. He is free to play friendly, even at E0, with many like on options. In the foreseeable future, I'm seeing there's a push for follow-up attack meta and enemies that actually spam crowd controls that are very annoying, both of which Aventurine can deal with very well. I want to wish you a good luck on your polls. Like the video if you enjoyed it. My name is Gladius. Thank you for watching, until next time.